Um, what is also unpopular is rising food prices. And I must admit, as a man, a bachelor who lives alone, I am not particularly sensitive to the vagaries of supermarket shopping, but I don't have mouths to feed. And I am relatively, in terms of New Zealand, well off. But most certainly inflation, as we know, running 7.3%, 7.4%. Uh, and that just doesn't hit... Um, and we know we've got high fuel price prices, and those things don't just hit homeowners and people paying mortgages. They hit transport companies and they feed through into the cost of the most basic items that we buy and indeed the food that we buy that keeps us alive. And some interesting stuff coming out of um, Stats New Zealand to discuss those statistics. We are joined now by Jason Aitwell from Statistics New Zealand. Jason, welcome to the program. What are you seeing in the stats that you're getting uh, there at the department? Kia ora, and thanks for having me on your show again. I really appreciate it. Um, like you said, you, you hit the nail on the head in the intro, I think. Um, so our latest food price index release showed that food prices were up 10.1% from the year October 2022. So that's faster than the rate of inflation, eh? Yeah, yeah. So uh, annual inflation, the latest one we've got is the September 2022 quarter compared to September 2021 quarter. And overall consumer inflation is up 7.2% as measured by the Consumers Price Index. So why is food outstripping? Why is uh, food as you measure it outstripping uh, the basic inflation rate? Yeah, I, I think there's a number of factors, and you touched on some of them, like, um, you know, you've got to move stuff around from from the growers or the producers to the supermarkets, all that kind of stuff, so that, you know, we know that the cost of petrol and diesel has been high over yep. the last year or so. Yeah. It's dipped a little bit recently, but, you know, that, that's and diesel, a Diesel, which happening. a lot of transport fleets use, is still pretty high. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah it is, yeah. And then you've got other stuff that goes into, you know, the cost of things and wages are going up now as well. You know, that's sort of the the typical uh, economic theory, you know, where you've got inflation going up and then people want higher wages to try and keep up with inflation. It becomes and a it's, a vicious, it's a vicious circle. Um, it sure is. Is there any particular food group, um, and I don't know if you measure in groups or by individual items, that stands out as costing way, way more than others or the increase in, in price of a particular food? Yeah, so, like, yeah, we do we do measure broad categories like grocery food prices. They're up 9.7%. Fruit and veggies were up 17%, which, you know... What? Yeah, that's, um, that's a big increase. What? And the restaurant meals and ready-to-eat foods are up 7.5%. Yeah. Um, in terms of like specific things, a couple that we called out in our release were barn raised eggs, cheddar cheese, and two minute noodles. So, you know, cheese. Uh, this is bad for for students. So, cheese, noodles, yeah. and eggs. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I, I got a I got a twelve year old boy, and that's what he eats as soon as he gets home from school. <laughs> so, <you. laughs> so how much is cheese up by? Oh, I don't have that in front okay. of me, but, you know, cheese has been going up for a, for a long, long time, and, you know, the blocks are getting smaller, and, and you know, it's well over $20 a kilo that, now for that, a block of cheese. Yeah, that's 70% on fruit and veg. That's so disproportionate. Um, 17, 17. 17%, so. yeah, and, and the average is 10.1% for food as a general category. Do we have an explanation for that? Has it been a bad season or what? Um, yeah, the, I mean, the fruit and veg is, is, is susceptible to, to seasonality and supply and demand and all that kind of stuff. And then, again, the transport cost is a proportion of that. Mm. Um, you know, that, that can be a factor too. Yeah. Is there any suggestion or is there anything that sticks out you think that might be price gouging, that's a supplier taking the mickey? Or as you say, <laughs> is it just this general environment or spiral? Yeah, well, we we do we for the for the food price index, we basically measure the sticker price. We we measure what the prices are in the supermarkets and and other outlets and online and all the rest of it to see what the prices are. That's what we're measuring in the food price index. We do yeah. have a different release which is measures business prices and it measures business prices both from an input perspective and an output perspective. So then you can see relatively 
as, a, as it being driven by input costs or output costs or what yeah. you know what's driving those costs. It's a different different release. We don't have it by you know by fruit and vegetables and stuff like that. So yeah. it's sort of by industry. All right. Okay, Jason. And when is the next time you're going to be measuring this? The next quarter in three months' time, is it? Yeah, well, the, the food prices we, me- we measure and release monthly. Yeah. Um, oh, monthly, okay. So yep, so there'll be another one before Christmas to add some joy and Christmas <laughs> cheer. And then the, the next um, Consumers Price Index, which is the quarterly one, that comes out in January, around about the 24th, 25th of January, something like that. Okay, I'll put those in the news diary. Um, <laughs> J- Jason, the other question is, so there's 10.1% for food as a general category, at a time of 7.2% inflation. Do you measure, can you give us a historical context or, or a medium term historical context on to how high that price, when was the last time we had annual food price inflation of 10% or more? Yeah, and that's a great question. It's, it's the highest increase uh, in food prices since November 2008. So that was that's 14 a while. years ago. That, that is was a while, while. ago. And what was happening yeah, in 2008, global financial crisis? Yeah, that's right. The context of the global financial crisis, I think we had some droughts in 2007-ish. Yeah. And then there was a, there was sort of like a, a global food crisis. So it's similar to what's happening now, I think the price of wheat shot up. Well, that's um, right. We've got Ukraine feeding in, feeding into food supply uncertainty in Europe which does have a knock-on effect here. Okay, I'm just looking for factors yeah. now in a, in a historic, yeah. historical context. So we've got Ukraine and the wheat problem because Ukraine the biggest producer of wheat in, yeah. um, in, in Europe and issues with supply there, obviously. Okay, what else might, be, might we factor in when we think about where this 10.1% comes from? Yeah, you're right. And so the, the wheat prices, as you say, that that's kind of indirect for us. So we don't get a lot of wheat directly from okay. Ukraine. But as, as global demand goes up, that pushes up the price, right? So I think most of our wheat comes from Australia. Yeah. Uh, but the prices get pushed up. And same thing's happening with the fuel or has happened with the fuel. Yeah. So although we don't directly get fuel from Russia, it pushes, you know, that demand or the, the shortage of supply pushes up the global price. So yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that's definitely, those are definitely yeah. Jason, can we say how much is this is farm gate prices for New Zealand manufact- agricultural, um, you know, meat, uh, beef manufacturers, dairy manufacturers putting up their prices? Is this a result of farmers having a bit of a gouge and a bit of a crack or not? Or are they just reflecting their input prices? Well, I can't tell you, sorry, until we get we put out the business price index um, to to see you know all the relative change in the input yeah. versus prices versus the output prices. Yeah. I, I I think it's just you know we this is a global problem as you well know inflation yeah. at the moment. So I, you know I wouldn't say particular gouging or anything like that. I yeah. think it's just conditions. Do and, you notice you know, it, Jason, in your life? Yes. Yep. Definitely. Wow. Definitely. The cost of things are going up. Um, yeah, yeah, and that, like you said in your intro, like, yeah, we're a fortunate family. We've got two people working, so it's not tight for us, but I'm sure it's tight for a lot of New Zealanders. Yeah. Hey, Jason, fascinating stuff. Always really good talking to you because you get some facts. <laughs> and there's no <laughs> conspiracy theories from, from Statistics New Zealand. Jason, I will talk again soon, mate. Thank you so much for that brief. Uh, have a good day. <laughs> That is Jason Adwell from uh, Statistics New Zealand. There you have it. Now, really interesting. The highest rate of annual food inflation since November 2008, 10.1%. And that's coming when general inflation high at 7.2%. But food pricing outstripping that, possible issues, fuel prices, particularly diesel, and some flow on global food insecurity because of Ukraine, which is a massive wheat producer. Um, Fruit and veg up 17%. The best things you can eat. The best foods you can eat are fruit and vegetable, organic or not. Um, Gosh, I had a fascinating night talking about organic farming the other night. Yeah, I didn't. I reached for the knife to open my wrists at one stage of the conversation.
Oh, is that, should I put a warning on that? If I breach some rule, I'm probably a terroriser. Um, but 17% is the annual rise of fruit and veggie prices. Where does that come from? And look, I'd love to hear from you by text or by call. Uh, text 5050, call 0800 333 As I say, I am... I haven't been to the supermarket now for about three weeks, I think, and I can get by because I'm a single guy... I can get by a little bit of Uber Eats. I have some Vogels in the fridge with some cheese and I'll buy tomatoes and avocados and stuff. But my diet is pretty pretty unremarkable, to be honest. I might have a club, uh, I might have a tub of jelly tip and the ice cream in the fridge, but, and I buy fruit and veggie. And I have noticed tomatoes up in price, mandarins, oranges, apples and that all up in price. Um, don't bother with bananas anymore. They all go off before I get a chance to eat them. Um, but are you finding it hard? Are you finding it hard to feed yourself? And how do you... I can't imagine the challenge of being on the average wage in New Zealand and having two or 2.5 kids, paying a mortgage and paying to feed everyone. So how are you managing? Have you noticed this remarkable, and I think it is remarkable, uh, increase in food prices?